we're here for another video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here, it's Oriel. Today I have this look on from my Physician's Formula video, so if you'd like to watch that, click on the I and it'll take you over there. Today we are talking about some things that I don't like, and I use some very inflammatory and triggering language, so if you are mentally prepared to handle your favorites being roasted, please keep on watching, we're getting into it right now. Alright, so if you are interested in the look that I have on my face right now, it was made by the Physicians Formula Murumuru Ultimate Butter Collection Bronzer Almanac thing. I have a video on it coming out here, and I also did another one making like a purple cut crease situation, and I will link that one if it's up as well, either in the eyes or in the description box below. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If it's not up yet, it will be up soon. So that's this. I'm also hoping to make it a series, so let me know your feedback down below. Let's get into the makeup products that I don't use, aka my unpopular makeup opinions. I'm volunteering myself to be crucified in this video. I know I have strong opinions in general, and then strong opinions on makeup gets you into all kinds of hot water, but I need to speak my truth. So here we are. The first thing that I don't use are trendy slash gimmicky serums. Now I should say first and foremost, trendy slash gimmicky anything is like not a good look because I mean, unless you are genuinely the kind of person who likes that kind of thing, it just makes you look like you are hopping on a bandwagon or you're trying to get views for clickbait. I just, I don't know, like that Becca zero color thingamajig. We just knew it wasn't going to be useful. I get that it's people's jobs to review stuff, but I just feel like, what did we think it was going to do? It's a zero pigment product. I think in many ways it let us down even more. <laughs> like, its only claim was that it was going to hydrate and mattify you, and it couldn't do either of those either. So that was just gross and messy, but just... Well, speaking of that aside, I think serums in particular or like prime like those kinds of like trendy primers I'm thinking about in particular anything from Farsali like those Unicorn semen things or like the, the glam glow. I think glam glow did a bunch of stuff like Too Faced did like their glow job stuff Those are serums skincare any kind of gimmicky clickbait skincare product that goes underneath makeup that like is tangential to the makeup industry I just that makes me feel gross man um I think a lot of times they have skincare claims just use skincare you know like I I talk about this a lot and it kind of connects me to the next point but you're not looking to makeup companies to make skincare ingredients or skincare products right so why when a makeup company makes a skincare product and then adds gimmick to it would you give them the light of day? Is it just because it's outrageous? I just, I personally don't believe in using those kinds of products, and so I think they're overrated, I think they're stupid, I don't use them. The next kind of thing I don't use is a priming moisturizer. Bro, what, what the hell is a priming moisturizer? Just use a regular moisturizer. <laughs> I know there's certain kinds of moisturizers that sit well underneath makeup, and the moisturizers that don't sit well underneath makeup, just have both. Again, look to your skincare experts to make a skincare product, not makeup companies that like dabble a little bit in like glycerin and call it a day, right? Like it's also probably so much more money to get a moisturizing primer product from Smashbox, their primerizer, primerizer my ass. It's just a moisturizer and maybe it dries down like kind of matte. I don't, I don't know. They're so expensive. I think Smashbox products, no one is talking about how expensive Smashbox is. Smashbox is so expensive. Just for me, I don't feel I need to do that. I mean, you can use a moisturizer that works with your makeup just fine. I just think that if you're going to use a makeup primer, it should do something for the makeup. Either let it sit better, let it adhere better, let it glide over the skin more, let it last longer, I mean, any number of things. Unless you're talking about a moisturizing product that can like re-texturize flaky dry skin, nothing's gonna work. I don't know, it's weird. Um, I know like there's been a whole thing, there's a whole 2020 deep dive into the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream because it was like $95 and I've tried that thing. It's great, it's beautiful, I mean it's super super fragranced and so for that reason I think if you have any kind of sensitive skin, even if you don't have sensitive skin, you shouldn't be putting fragrance onto your skin. Um, but I just, I personally think it's a huge hoax. I have never had any problems using a high quality moisturizer that agrees with makeup formulation and calling it a day. I mean, I whatever, it, it's gone, whatever. The next thing I don't use is a particular spot concealer. Now, this may be because I'm too cheap to go out and try different concealer formulations, and you know, I'll change my mind when someone sends me free concealer for me to use as a pot concealer, but what I do is I use one concealer for my eyes and my face. <laughs> it's really not that deep. I know that a lot of people talk about having one that doesn't budge on the face and then one on the eyes is more emollient, blah, 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 but you can do both. 
get you a concealer that can do both. They exist. Um, I know Kelly Gooch also loves this one. This is the Milani Conceal and Perfect. This is one that I use all over my face and under my eyes. It doesn't make my eyes look crepey. It doesn't make my skin look too greasy or shiny. It just does both. It does both. <coughs> I'm getting so mad. My like throat is closing up. I don't know if this is because of my relative youth. I mean, my under eyes are smooth and um, don't have that many issues, but in terms of under eye concealer, you can always add a little bit of extra hydration here to make it work, and then powder a little bit here to make it work, but there's just, there's ways to make things work. I just personally don't think I could repurchase a, like, NARS soft matte concealer for $36 over and over again, and then an under eye concealer for another $35 over and over again, just to have two separate concealers that look the same on the face. They all look like beige on the face. <laughs> It's just a matter of their texture and how long they, they last on your skin. If one thing rubs off here, maybe you need to prime and set in a certain way. Just try to look for, I don't know, I just, I've never felt a need to have two different concealers. I do have two different concealers, um, first of all because they were cheap and I was able to get them and I was able to rationalize them to myself, but also because they're completely different tones. One is a peach tone for brightening and cancelling and the other one is a skin tone match, but I just, in terms of different concealer formulas, I haven't needed to F with different kinds so far. I've been able to modify my procedure before or after to accommodate different types of concealer. Let me know if you're the kind of person who has different concealers like for your under eyes and your face just so I can understand why it's so necessary and unworkable to have just the one. Let me know. Lip balm and lip scrub. I don't F with them. Yo, who has money for lip balm and lip scrub? Lip balm, I understand, but also we'll get into it. Lip scrub, mm -mm. honey, you know what's a lip scrub that's free 99 A towel with water. <laughs> Or like actual sugar from your kitchen. If you really wanted to do a lip scrub, get you some granulated sugar and maybe vanilla extract, a little bit of glycerin, and just go to town, girl. I just, Jeffree Star and other companies charging $19 for lip scrub gives me a chill down my spine. It really does. It makes me like wonder where the value of a dollar is because you know he's packaging that thing for like three cents a piece, maybe less. Three cents including packaging. Like, <laughs> what's the point? Also, how rough are your lips that you need to be scrubbing at them. I don't know, maybe I just don't suffer from really, really dry lips, but there are other ways to slough off skin cells, there's ways to hydrate that don't include crappy, crappy chopsticks and really, really overpriced lip balms and really, really overpriced lip scrubs. If you're someone who makes your own lip scrub and you don't buy like deluxe <laughs> $19 lip scrubs, I'm not talking to you. If you're buying the Wet n Wild one, I'm not talking to you. If you're someone who buys a $20 Dior lip scrub, let me hear why you do that, just because I don't I don't understand it. When my lips are dry, what I do is I soften them up and I use a little bit of a towel just to get the skin off, plump them up with a little bit of a hyaluronic acid, seal them in with a little bit of like a pure oil. What I use is, what is it called, like baby balm? It's one from Honest and it's, it's just like a, a blend. It's an emulsion of different oils like sunflower oil, almond oil, avocado oil, and I just kind of seal it over my lips. So that's that's the thing with lip balm is if you watch Jen Loves Review, Jen Loves Reviews, her video on why your chapstick sucks, most chapsticks are awful for you. And, and most of them with menthol perpetuate the problem and the irritation you have on your lips. So I think for the most part, people who are applying chapstick, like serial appliers of chapstick, whether they know it or not, it's actually not great for their lips. I think there are some chapsticks that are better than others, but for the most part, I don't think it's a necessary part of your routine. I mean, lip care is important, but chapstick or lip balms in that sense, especially luxury lip balms, girl, I don't think they're doing anything for you. Or if they are doing something for you, you have to be very, very careful to look at the ingredients list. And then at that point, it's just like oils and stuff. <laughs> Why pay so much money for that kind of thing? I don't know. I just... I would much prefer a salve that I can apply everywhere, like my cuticles, my elbows, my knees, my wrists, um, and my lips, and maybe around my nostrils, because, you know, in the wintertime, that's where I get wrecked, like seriously wrecked. And um, it works. It's, I don't know. It's <laughs> I don't know. I feel really strongly about this. I'm sorry. I'm going to cool it down. Okay, here is something that's going to get me in trouble. Loose glitters like in pots. Who has time for that? Who has time for loose glitters? I don't have time for it. First of all, I don't have time for microplastics, okay? I, any company that is still using non-biodegradable glitter, Colourpop, um, we don't stand. <laughs> we don't like that. For the most part, we are all kind of sick and tired of that, so if we could all move to biodegradable glitters, that would be great. The other thing is, loose glitters, 
you have to either take them out of the pot and apply a glitter solution, like a glitter gel, glitter, what are they called? The ones that Lit Cosmetics used to do, they were clear and they came in a little bottle. You need to use that to kind of stick it onto your eye. Or if it's like a pot glitter, you have to take out the pot of glitter, unscrew it, put it on your eyes, screw it back on. It's just, it's so much. There are other ways to get glitter. I mean, you could do a pressed glitter shadow, like, you know, the ones that just kind of have the formula mixed in. You could do a glitter, you know, wand, like something that has glitter in the eyeshadow already, so it's just like a one step. You could do a textured eyeshadow that doesn't need glitter. Um, there's just, <laughs> I just have questions about potted glitters. I just, I personally don't have the money or the patience. Also, yeah, the money. They're so expensive. They're never like five or six dollars. They're like eighteen dollars for one glitter. So then you gotta use up the whole glitter before it dries up, or if it's a dry glitter, you gotta get the separate formula to like, you know, attach to your eyes. I just, I can't F with loose glitter. It's just too much for me. And in that same vein, I can't F with loose shadows. Oh my goodness, I have gotten rid of all of my Super Shock shadows because I love them. I love them with all of my heart, okay? I truly do. I think there's nothing that beats a Super Shock shadow for like an all over lid look. But I also cannot stand opening and closing a single like container of product. Nothing grinds my gears like having to open and close individual compacts over and over again. Unless you have a really simple routine and you're just opening and closing three things like your foundation, your eyeshadow, and your blush, and then that, that that's it. Like you're you're not touching anything else. Okay, fine. But I have such an intense makeup routine that if I tried to incorporate single potted shadows into my looks, my god, it would expand. I, I just I can't. In the same way that I can't do like stick shadows. Oh, stick things. I didn't even have stick things on here. I hate stick things. Nude sticks, caviar sticks, Mally cosmetics. Oh my god, any of those sticks. I can't F with them. I can't F with NARS sticks. I can't F with eyeshadow sticks. They're so irritating to use. Either they're irritating because you scrub them on your eyes and then you have to use a brush to blend them out. So what's the point? Just dip into a powder brush. If you apply a stick eyeshadow to your eyes, you're still going to need to blend it out. You don't just scrub a stick onto your eyes and go, all right, like we're done here. You still have to use a, a brush to blend it out. If you're gonna use a brush to blend it out, just dip it into a powder eyeshadow. What is the point? I don't get it. If you're gonna use like a nude sticks blush, like the sticks, scrub it onto your skin. If it's a good formula, it doesn't disturb the stuff underneath. If it's a bad formula, it does disturb the stuff underneath. Then you gotta blend it out again. If you're gonna blend it out again, if you're gonna use a sponge or a brush, why don't you just dip it into a powder product or a cream product? What's the point of using a stick? I don't get the stick thing. And then, God forbid you have a stick product that needs to be sharpened, like you actually need to have a sharpener. Those NARS pencils, I threw them out because I didn't know you had to sharpen them. I was like, why, are there, why is there so little product in here? Well, turns out th the freaking plastic pencil was actually sharpenable. First of all, why use a plastic component that can be sharpenable? Why not just a wooden one, right? Like if you're going to use a stupid pencil type thing, make it a wood component so we know we can sharpen it. Why would I have to sharpen a product? I mean, oh god, this makes me so mad. Lip products, right? Lipsticks, they scroll up. What is the point of reinventing something in a more inconvenient way, right? I have to imagine in primitive years, they had to have the product in stick form because that was the only way you could, you know, have a product. Now we have components that can scroll up, like you can screw the product through the component and then you can screw it back down. Why go back? Why regress into like a sharpenable product? I don't understand. And then on top of that, those formulas have to be dry because otherwise you can't really sharpen it without the whole thing falling off. Um, a lot of times they were emollient and like the whole thing would just like rub off like you would sharpen it and then like the tip would just crack off and then you would lose your, your lip product. <sighs> I, I hate, that wasn't even on the list. That was just like an off the cuff. I realized it and I forgot how much I hated that kind of thing. It's just stupid. I don't know anyone who's like, I prefer having a lip product that's in a stick that I have to manually sharpen over a lipstick bullet that is the right texture and in an, in an easy to deliver vehicle because it's nostalgic or whatever. Like I, it's not a viable reason. And also it's like plastic. It's not even low waste. It's like a plastic sharpenable component. And then you oftentimes have to buy a sharpener to make that thing work. If you get like the retractable ones, then what's the point, right? If you get one that like looks like a stick, but it's a pencil, but it's in a plastic, I, mm. I'm getting too mad. I'm getting too mad. All right, let's move on. Contour stick slash powder. Contour is something that I own, but I don't use very often because there's just too much stuff on my face already. I have blush, bronzer, and highlight on my cheeks, and don't they already look like a lot is going on here? Could you imagine if I went in and I contoured over all of this? I think it would just be so much. And then what would be down here? Like absolutely nothing. I would just feel like my face is imbalanced. Um, but I do understand that contour is useful for 
you know, like when you're pulling out all the stops, you go into the nines, like everything is a whole big deal. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I think people who contour like a lot, it's very clear that you're contouring a lot. You know what I mean? Like it very rarely looks good unless you are using the slightest of hands. You're just kind of oh, brushing like very delicately just to like carve out underneath the jawline. And then, you know, I, I think especially with contour sticks, the products they make to give you like that three shape, they're not meant to be used subtly. I think Kim Kardashian made a product that was pretty sheer and light in tone and you know it actually did contour you but like who does tantor you know that thing is so freaking dark and so like grody like it looks kind of dirty on people like i i know tantor is a really popular product and i'm sure there's a bunch of other ones that have escaped me right now but anytime i see someone using like a contour stick like it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot especially if you're going in on top with other products it's like extra a lot aside i like hate the way scott barnes does makeup like when he went on Tati's channel and he did like the three and like he contoured underneath her nose and her chin like she looked like an actual clown like she looked like donald trump um or like he also is like an oompa loompa like why is no one talking about the way that he looks um i don't know i just i wouldn't take advice from someone who looks like that just personally that's not my makeup taste it just kind of looks like a lot like you look like you're trying to intimidate people into listening to you because you talk loudly and you look loud um but i just i don't think the contour looks really good on people in real life I also don't think it looks good on camera, so I don't know. I'm not apologizing. I just think contour sticks, contour powder, done on the extreme every single day doesn't look good. That's just my opinion. My next one, mascara primer. This one might be good if you've got average lashes and you want to get to like the nice lashes um, and they really elevate your look. I have like six lashes on each eye and the lash primer does zilch for me. Regular mascara does zilch for me, but lash primer does zilch for me and then it costs me more money to have the lash primer just sitting there. So. I personally can't use it. I can't bother with it. Um, I do know that a lot of people like lash primer because it makes them feel more put together. Their lashes are something to write home about. I just can never get to a point in my life where lash primer makes any discernible difference on my face. So that is an unpopular opinion, but I'm gonna stand by it. I just have to say my makeup routine is long enough already. I do so many steps already that go unnoticed that adding lash primer is really not at the top of my priority list, nor is it at the top of my budgeting list because lash primer, that's like a whole other thing you have to be replacing all the time. So I just, I personally don't think it's worth getting. I don't, I don't laugh with that thing. All right, the next one is definitely controversial and that is a continuous or a compressed aerosol setting mist spray. Now, the reason why I don't use this is strictly for environmental reasons, but I just don't think it's worth the, how do I say this? I think it's harder to recycle those products. And unless you're the kind of person who is responsible enough to disassemble or drive to a recycling facility that accepts compressed air or, you know, like this kind of product, I normally would never buy a product like this. This was sent to me, so I don't personally use this kind of thing. But any kind of mist that has this nozzle, even if it's for hair, if it's for face, especially for face, nothing you put on your face should or has to come out of a package that looks like this. It's just not the case. So any of the Morphe sprays, the Dior Air Flash, what other, Patrick Ta's like luminous setting spray. Uh, I'm sure there's a whole bunch that I'm not thinking of right now, The or like the Evian water sprays. It just, it feels irresponsible to me to put your physical comfort, like not even like your, to put your artistic expression and your need to do something like so cool and so new and so hip and like that much better over the needs of the environment. I think for the most part, I don't want to speak on stuff like this because I am a hypocrite, right? Like I buy a ton of makeup that is going to landfill or I'm like, you know, applying more makeup remover to wash it off and it goes through the drain and then, you know, people like my husband have to clean it out of the water systems. But, you know, I think there's a line to draw and I think the line to draw is like unnecessary packaging that just kind of gives you clout. I don't know, like the Morphe spray. People go through that stuff like crazy. I've seen people use like six, seven, eight, nine of them like in a year. And it's like, for, for what? Like, it's just a setting spray. It doesn't do anything for you that a different setting spray can't do. The mist is so fine. It's it's like, I, I don't have to pull the trigger like over and over again. It's just like, I push it down and like sprays over my face. Like, just get over yourself, you know? Like, I, I just can't imagine a world in which you would prefer to do that over and over for the rest of your life over just spraying regular setting spray on your face. There's also like continuous spray bottles. You can get yourself a continuous spray bottle, fill it up with your setting spray, and then pull the trigger and just have it mist 
continuously. That's like a real thing. I have one. I don't know. I, I know this is like definitely going to be the most controversial opinion just because I'm not 100% rooted in the facts. I'm not saying that I'm better because I don't. I just, it feels icky knowing that like that's not even a thought that they have. At least from what I can see. You know, the compressed air or the continuous spray doesn't seem to be disappointing or frustrating to them in that way. So that's kind of just surprising to me. Jelly products. Who invented the jelly products? I think this started with, again, Farsali, the queen of uh, gimmicky crap. Who thought, all right, you know what needs to be made? A highly expirable, short-lived product that has a disgusting moist texture that people are just going to go, ooh, on social media for. I mean, just, uh, are people's attention spans so short that they can't, like, just appreciate a product for the fact that it's a good product. It has to now have like an innovative texture, like a hilarious texture that children, I mean children play with slime because they don't have the like cognitive ability to enjoy a product for what it is. They just look at it and they go, mm, squishy, right? Like as adults, shouldn't we be able to enjoy a product regardless of the texture that it is, like how entertaining the texture is. I get it, a jiggly product is like fun and fresh or whatever, and it's like marketable on social media. So let those social media people use them. Like why are regular people using jelly products? Why? They're more expensive for, I think, less product, right? Product's gonna dry up, evaporate, it's gonna you know, expire soon, or you know, you're not gonna be able to use it up. On top of that, it's got all the issues I just mentioned, it expires soon, whatever. Thirdly, you're gonna have to figure out how to use a freaking jelly textured product. It's not a liquid, it's not a cream, it's not a putty, it's not a powder. What the hell is it? They just, they created this new formula just to be new. Just for the sake of novelty, just for the sake of virality, they decided to come up with this thing and now we the consumers have to deal with it. If it was for social media, fine, let social media influencers get their hands on the jelly shit, get it all over the place, like, ooh, jelly this, jelly that. Why is it being popular in the mainstream? Why are jelly eyeshadows, jelly highlighters, jelly cheek products, why are they still here in 2020? Why are jelly products still being sold? I guess people are buying them. Why, girl? Why are you buying jelly products? What do they bring to you? I also like hate the feeling of moist, cold, slimy things on my face, anywhere on my body. Like, do people enjoy that sensation of like cold, moist, jelly, gelatinous products anywhere? Like that just has to be one of the top most disgusting sensations I can think of. So I personally hate anything jelly. Lip liners. I don't buy them. I just don't F with lip liners. I don't really have trouble right now with color fading and um, feathering outside of my lip line. What I do if I really want to lay down a base product is I will take a, an eyeshadow powder and I will just tap it all over my lips and use kind of the curvature of my finger to really press along the lines to make sure it's nice and crisp. Um, if I want a crisp line, if I don't want a crisp line, I just don't do that. But I do understand that not everyone has the luxury of using a finger. Some people need to correct their lip shape or to, I don't know, like they, they need to overdraw their lips, so they need the precision of a pencil. To that I just say, cool, like you do you, I just, I don't feel a need to purchase lip products that just add more fuss to my life. Um, I'm always trying to minimize the number of things that I have to bring in and repeatedly purchase just because a beauty interest adds up over time. Like thinking about how much money I spent on beauty, if it's not voluntary, if it's not because I am distinctly thinking about adding something into my collection, it could insidiously add up to so much money over a lifetime. And so I'm actively trying to remove products that I don't think are completely essential in my routine. Long 25 millimeter lashes. Okay, I don't know who needs to say this, but some of these lashes really do be looking like pubes, okay? They have this like scraggly, curly, like pubic hair texture. Are these like popular in the mainstream? Because I'm seeing them all over my IG and I don't, know if people are just being polite and not saying anything. So I'm I'm really not trying to attack any person here. I just, I'm curious to see what kinds of people are wearing these lashes because they look like pubic hair. They do, like they, they don't look good. And I clicked on one of them once just to see what people were saying and they were like, oh, these lashes are so fluffy. Like they're really like fluffy and pretty. And I'm just like, you know how on the lashes they say 100% human hair? Yeah, I get that feeling, but I also don't get the feeling that they're 100% eyelash hair, you know what I'm saying? Like, I I don't like them. I give, they give me, like, the heebie-jeebies. Like, they're so thick and long, and they're, like, curly. Eyelash hairs should not be, like, kinky and curly, okay? I just, your eyelash hairs, if they look like that, they look like another kind of hair, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm. 
I'm like not trying to have like eyelash discrimination here because I know a lot of people are looking at my natural lashes or my lashes that I, the false lashes I put on and they're, you know, they're fluttery and they're thin and they're thinking, oh my god, like what's the point of you wearing lashes if they're going to look like that? So obviously to each her own, I'm just saying from my perspective, those lashes look a little hilarious to me. They look a little clownish. Um, so I'm personally not going to spend $38 on a pair of lashes like that because I think they look like pubes or at the very best, they just look unflattering. So um, the 25 millimeter lashes, I, I'm i not on board and I want to know who is on board. I want to know if you're the kind of gal who's paying so much money for really long puby lashes, why? And um, what made you do that? Why? Why are you doing that? How come? The last product on my list are anything tinted or glossy or just a hint of color. Especially at a high price point, why would I pay for something that has basically all filler and no product? <laughs> As someone who is very frugal and wants to get the most out of the money they spend, I just would assume that you would want to buy something that has the most amount of pigment that you can control in post, right? Like if I got a lipstick that is really, really dark and really opaque and matte, I could sheer it out and make it a slightly sheerer matte product. I could wear it full on and apply a gloss on top and have it be a glossy product. I could mix it with a different color and have it be even more tinted or, you know, even lighter. But if you're starting with a really watery color, you cannot add product to that. You can't make it more versatile by itself. It needs to lean on other things. So in that sense, why would you choose a lip balm that has just a tiny hint of color? Why would you choose a mascara that just does a tiny bit of lengthening? Why choose a cheek product that just puts a gloss on your cheek, but like a tiny hint of color? I just, any kind of product that does a tiny amount of work, <laughs> why? That's like saying, I'm picking between two employees. One is to, known to be really industrious, a hard worker, gets everything done, is really effective, efficient, good bang for buck. You know, they work well with others, all that thing. The other one, you know, they do some work. They don't really play well with others. They're not necessarily good at a lot of things but like they're good at one thing and you know they, they're gonna cost the same you know if when we decide the salary so I, I you know even though the first guy was really capable in a lot of different ways i think i'm gonna go with the second one yeah it does like one thing better like if you want a tinted lip gloss it does that it tints your lip and is a gloss but also it doesn't do anything else you're paying good money for a product that does like one very specific task moderately well but then it doesn't do anything else. I just, maybe I'm like too focused on value for money here, but there's no value in getting something that does so little. I don't know. Man, I feel like this video is really negative and I probably won't post it, but if I do post it, it's all in good fun. <laughs> I'm not trying to trigger you guys. Um, please roast me in the comments below. I want to know why I'm wrong because as of right now, I haven't had anyone to talk to about these kinds of things. No one I know personally is into makeup to the degree that I am. So I'm not able to get into debates with my friends about these kinds of things. I, I need to know answers. If you are someone who feels strongly about any of these things below, please let me know. Um, I need to understand where the other side is coming from because I, I don't get it. Again, it's okay that I don't get it. It's saving me coin, it's saving me money. I just don't have to put these things in my makeup routine. And if you are someone who has been buying jelly products or loose glitter without realizing why or how you do it. Um, reconsider your life, okay? Please, I want you to save money. I want you to simplify your routine. I want you to do all the things that give you a good beat, you know, like this. I'm not wearing a minimal face of makeup by any means, but I'm not <laughs> wasting my money. So reconsider whether you're wasting your money or not. That's all I want you to think about. That being said, um, I hope my next video won't inflame everyone. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if that sounds interesting to you, I hope you subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you join the family. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you don't hate me <laughs> and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye.